today. I believe that faith comes faith comes by and hearing the what? Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you today. Thank you, God, for the victory that we have today. In Jesus' name. Freedom. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. The scriptures are going to come uh, overhead, but it'll only be the numbers. You'll have to find them today. Use your Bibles. Use your phones. We're going to be busy today a little bit. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about faith, the founding of the church, the foundation of the church. Faith, the foundation of the church. We're fresh Past, well, just the resurrection. The resurrection. And between the resurrection and Pentecost are, is, is the period where Christ is, is founding the church. After he got up, he had hung on the cross. He had died, stayed dead three days, got up. He had been there, done that. You couldn't kill him again or try to. 
because that's, that, that was not the agenda. So Jesus didn't rush away. He kept showing himself to different groups of people. Groups of people. And I got to believe that some of these groups of people and some of these disciples and people he talked to were some of those that ended up in, 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 in the upper room in, in, on the day of Pentecost. So he was founding the church. And so here we, 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 we pick up a story uh, uh, on the Emmaus Road. Now Emmaus is a town that's seven miles outside of Jerusalem. But, but it, 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 is, it is where uh, uh, an event happened, an early event where Jesus has to do something in the lives of people to get them moving in the right direction. You think after spending three years with him that he would get them moving, or, uh, 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 he, he still needed to, to keep working on them, to get them to a solid place. Amen? Amen. We all need work. To keep moving to a solid place. Amen. Amen. Just when we think we're set. We find that we're not where we need to. Amen. So we need to keep moving. Yes. Amen? Amen. So here, here is, here's where we're going to jump off at. This is the beginning scripture reading. Luke 24. And kind of keep your marker right there. Because we're going to jump back and forth in Luke 24. 13 through 21. Luke 24, 24. when you have it, say amen, amen. And, and here begins the reading, now behold, Two of them were traveling that same day, that same day. Let me stop and explain what that same day meaning. The same day as the resurrection. That same day. Jesus had rose when? What time? When did he get up? Early. I know you were looking for an hour. Uh, Some of you say, what? What? What time? Is that a trick question, Pastor? <laughs> all I need for you to say, some of y'all got it quick. You'll say, oh, oh, he mean early. Yeah. All right, all right. Everybody say, later that day. Later that day. All right. Traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together. Who talked together? These two disciples. One is identified to us. The other one will not be. And it says, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. It's like they picked up somebody while they were talking. And they didn't know that they had a passenger. But you know, when I read that, I said, Jesus drew near, that means he was trailing them. Is it possible that sometimes Jesus is trailing you? Checking on what you talking about. And then he walked up on them. Okay, God, I ain't go, I got too much stuff. To go. But it said there, he drew near them and went with them. So they just accepted this stranger. They did, and, and the next verse says, but their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. That'll preach all by itself. He can be with you and you not see him and not know him. I, I submit to you that he's always with you. See, the not knowing is on your side. 
than not seeing is on your side. Oh, this going to get gooder and gooder, y'all. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? As you walk in t- and, 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 and are sad, he noticed their conversation was sad. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Where where you been? I think about Hamilton where, like I told you before, uh, uh, the Revolutionary War had gone on and Thomas Jefferson was in France. And when he got back, he asked, he sung a song, What Did I Miss? That's the same question that Cleopas is asking Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> He's asking Jesus. <laughs> you know, that's the time when you want to say something, but you don't because you're the main character in the story. <laughs> I, I, I really didn't miss it. You, 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 but you'll get that in a minute. I really didn't miss it. And he said to them, what things? <laughs> Sometimes God asks you a question, not that he doesn't know. But he won't qualify to answer with you. What things? So he invited himself into the conversation with a question. What things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God, and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Thus far the reading. Again, this event took place on Resurrection Sunday. Here, here is a journey to Emmaus, but it's not only a physical journey, but it's a spiritual journey. Every one of you will have an Emmaus Road experience. At the start of the seven-mile walk, they are discussing everything that is going on and what happened in Jerusalem. Really, really what's going on is that the reason why they are headed to Emmaus is because they they were getting out of town. Because it was too hot in Jerusalem. (laughs) The disciples were in hiding and some were getting out of town. Oh, we start walking, brother. We cannot hear. And it's going to make sense later that there was no need to go to Emmaus. Because you were running from what God sent you to. My God. There was unrest along with the way that Jesus had died. And, 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 and when Jesus joined them, he was unrecognizable to them. It's funny that they didn't know his voice. Oh, they didn't know his voice. He was hidden from them. They didn't know his voice. Let's move in. Although these disciples knew who Jesus was, they didn't recognize him. They knew a lot about him. They had been witnesses to many things he had done, yet they were unable to recognize Jesus when they met him. Here are three reasons why. It's not their fault that they didn't recognize him. It was a God thing. 
The one, number one reason they didn't really see him is in Luke 24 and 15. And it says, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near to them. The, the reason why they didn't, they, 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 didn't, they didn't see him, their eyes were kept from knowing him, is what the English Standard Bible uh, says. Their eyes were kept from knowing him. God did that. Sometimes you can think you see, but God has to back you up to really show you what to look at. So something, he has to keep you from seeing so you can get the lesson. Ooh, ooh. Are you out there? So he could open their eyes. What did he have to open their eyes to? A fuller revelation of who Jesus was. So sometimes you can think you know him, but you don't know him. So they needed a fuller revelation. Why did they need a fuller revelation? Because of what Jesus said. What are you all talking about? That's a, that's a messed up question because they should have had better answers. Have you not heard about what's going on? So they were moved by what was going on in the natural and they had overlooked everything Jesus had taught them. These were not the original 12. These were some of the other disciples like Mary Magdalene and, 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 and the other Mary and Martha. All of these people, they were, they were other disciples. But they had spent time with Jesus. That's why he had that. What are you talking about? Is it possible people can spend time with you and don't know you? Yeah. Don't hear you. They needed to learn certain lessons. And the lesson was how to trust God's promises. How to trust God's promises. They had belief problems that would develop into faith problems that wouldn't help them establish the church. They had belief problem that would, would just, just filter down into a faith problem. You can't afford a faith problem. Number two reason. Events had not happened as expected. Even though he talked with them. Even though he talked with them a long way. These men were sad because they thought Jesus had not done what he was supposed to do. He died. Still didn't do what he's supposed to do. Be because, see, to the Jews, he was supposed to redeem Israel. Yeah. And Israel only. Yeah. But before God could use this set of other disciples as founders of the church, he had to set their foundation in Jesus. Yeah. Not about Jesus, but in Jesus. Yeah. Know this. You can look at him and not see him. Amen. And you can listen to him and not hear him. Yeah. While God has a plan, we are not always privy to the total plan. Because you might have thought he was just coming for the Jews, but God was sending them for the world. Exactly. See, the world is more important than just one race of people. That's why I'm not a nationalist. God is not about a color. You might be in control, but you're not sovereign. Whew. Are you listening at me? Oh, oh. And so when people start running scared because they losing the grip because it, Folk ain't looking like them no more. They marrying royal and, and having mixed up babies. And but Jesus came for the Number third, the, three, the third reason is they had little faith. Luke 24 
20 through to 24, and it reads this. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that, 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 that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Now, they twisted the story. These two disciples, they didn't see no vision of an angel. They saw an, they saw a real angel. I'm looking at Rose. I'm not looking at a vision of Rose. Rose, is that you? Say, that's you, Rosa. That's you, Rosa. I'm not looking at a vision of Rose. See, their unbelief is in what they say. See, see. In other words, them girls came back telling us a tale. Come on, come on. You have to read the scripture for all this work. And they, they say they saw a vision. That's your interpretation. That's the Hollywood version. No, they saw real angels. Who said he was alive. Verse 24. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb, talking about Peter and, and the gang that ran to the tomb after the girls came back and said they saw an angel. And certain of us, of those who were with us, went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. So they didn't believe the evangelists. Unbelief. Somebody say unbelief. unbelief. What did they not believe? They didn't believe in the supernatural power of God to raise Jesus from the dead. Or else they wouldn't have been sad on the Emmaus road. Or else the disciples wouldn't have been in hiding, scared for their life. When, when they couldn't find his body in the tomb, everybody should have got excited and said, you the man. He did it. He did it in spite of the fact that they had guards and had sealed the rock to the tomb. So the angels had to unseal the rock, roll it away. Not that Jesus couldn't have kicked it down. Jesus had armor bearers. He said, I worked on Friday, but I'm not working today. Get that rock and roll it out the way. While I get rid of these old nasty grave clothes and lay them down and walk out of here looking like what I'm supposed to be. The king of kings and the lord of lords. When they couldn't find the body, they should have pitched the party and said, Hey, you the man. While he was walking with him, he really wanted to ask him, What's wrong with y'all? What in the is wrong with y'all? Did I not tell you these things? Yes. Yes. That so as Jonah was in the belly of the whale yes. <laughs> for three days, yes. so must the Son of Man be in the, the heart of the earth. Yes. But if you tear this body down in three days, yes. you tear this temple down in three days, yes. so you shot. That I wasn't laying. <laughs> Anybody happy that they didn't find the body? The reason why they couldn't find the body is because Jesus had his body with him. <laughs> 
He needed his body. Because the body made him legal on earth. See, ghosts are illegal. Hates are illegal. But in the earth you need a body, even if it's a resurrected one. Are y'all there? Anybody getting a little something yet? They didn't believe in the super. But your faith needs to be moved to the super because it's his super on our natural that brings about the miraculous. You need his super on your natural. Because your natural is a mess. So you need the supernatural power of God on your natural to get the miraculous. Did y'all get that? On the Emmaus journey, on your Emmaus journey, Jesus has to open your eyes. Part of what you're doing is getting your sight back. As with these men, they needed to see a body before they could believe. The truth is, God wants us to see Jesus in the word he's given us about him. Jesus started opening these disciples' eyes by taking them through the word. He didn't show them his body. He said, I want you to see me in the word. Because the word is who I am. The word is who I am. Luke 24 and 27 says, what did he do? This man walking with them. He said, he said, and, 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 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the, the what? Concerning who? So he took them back through their Bible. Come on, boy. Let's, let's, okay, let's go back to Moses. Okay, let's, let's make the trip. I'm going to make a short trip. Because if I preach the whole Bible, we'll be here the next Sunday. <laughs> and y'all better not leave me in here by myself. <laughs> Luke 315. Genesis 315. Now this is the Amplified. If you got your, your phone, you can you can find different versions faster. But here is the, the reading from Genesis 315. And I will put enmity. And the Amplified says, open hostility between you and the woman. That's when Adam sinned. The reason why he said, I'm going to go back to Moses, and I ended up in, in, in Genesis, is because cause, cause Moses is credited with writing Genesis. Let's go back to Moses. Amen? Between you and the woman, and between your seed, offspring, and her seed, he shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. When did he bruise him? On Calvary. But when did he tear him up? When he got about the grave. The Bible says he made a spectacle of shame of him openly. After they had partied for three days, said, we got him. Then, run to Deuteronomy 18.15. Old Testament. When you have it, say amen. Okay, I'm not, until I get uh, about five more amens. Uh, <laughs> everybody got it? Uh, all right, all right. Don't fool me. And if you don't have a look on with somebody that, that got it, and make sure they're not in Leviticus, they in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18 to 15. 
And, and <laughs> Jesus had to show him who he was. It, it says here, the Lord what? will do what? Raise up for who? A prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him shall you hear. You shall hear. Is that Jesus? All right. Isaiah 7, 14. You'll be able to find Isaiah. You were just at Isaiah 43. Isaiah 7, 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. I need five more. Therefore, <laughs> the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin, meaning one, <laughs> on, on, on. only one like her that had a baby and was a virgin. Holy Ghost. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is Hebrew for God with us. And that was important to Jews because it meant the name meant God would protect the house of David. And that's where Jesus came from. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, when they said name him, they were really talking about title him. Because later on he was told what to name him. That was in direct line with his job description. Call him Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. See, that's Savior Jesus. And when we want deliverance, we don't say, Emmanuel. We don't call his title. We say, Jesus. And some of us, when we really in tight, we don't get the us on it out. But God knows that you know the rest. <laughs> oh, you say, G. You, <laughs> How many of you had a just G? You didn't have time to get, that car was about to hit you. You didn't have, you have time to get holy and religious. And say, Jesus. You said, G. Okay, he's showing them who he is. He probably showed them this too, Isaiah 53 and 7. You don't have far to go to find that. Anybody getting blessed today? When you have us, say Amen. It said there, he was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. That's the courtroom scene. He didn't defend himself. Amen. Who are we talking about? He's showing him himself. So you got to know Jesus in the. You are saved not because you feel it. You saved because. Told you. All right. And last one for this, this, this trek through. 
Now, I'm sure, I don't know which one he shared with him, but these are some that, that we pulled out. He, I, he probably shared a whole bunch. It was, it, 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 it was seven miles. It was seven miles. So they walked and talked a lot after he got them out of, out of grief. Now, let me show you Jesus. See, Jesus will get you out of grief about your circumstances in life. <laughs> we don't always depend on, but I'm telling you, that's what it work. It's helping me. It gets you over stuff. How many know I'm right about that? See, see. And even when you don't feel nothing, what did the word say about it? See, ain't no feeling attached to this. One of these, but not one of them shout. They, they don't shout. They don't get happy. Ooh, they don't do nothing. <laughs> Isn't that the silliest thing you ever saw? They don't do nothing. It, but it speaks to you. It'll make you shout. <laughs> My God. Don't get in trouble and you read he'll be your sure deliverer. And don't be in need and read I shall not want. Don't have any be trouble and know that, that they can't stop you from eating because he'll prepare a table before. Come on, come on, come on. See, see, see. This don't shout but it help you shout. Oh, oh, we're going to get this in a minute. Come on, before y'all fall out, Zechariah 12 and 10. Still taking them on the trip. Zechariah 12 and 10. Some of y'all need to trip this way. <laughs> when you get there, say amen. That's three. Zechariah, table of contents, Zechariah, Z-E-C, 1210. Now, is this in your Bible, and I will? All, all right. If, if you're there, you in Zechariah. <laughs> all right. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Who are they talking about? Jesus, Jesus was talking about himself. He said, let me show you me. And later on, they said, well, I want, I, want, I want to say this to you. You must see Jesus in the word because he is the word. I don't want to run ahead of myself. I get excited. He was saying, I am the bread. God prevented these disciples from recognizing Jesus to convey deep truths to them, being to trust the testimony of Scripture. Write that in your note. I must trust the testimony of Scripture. All of us fall short at that, trusting the testimony, the witness of Scripture. I must trust it. In every sphere of your life, Romans 10, 17 says, and I say it every Sunday. So then faith comes by. Hearing. See, the only way you get more faith is through. Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. 
It's not by a lot of stuff you're listening to. You don't get faith out of that. You get a lot of stuff out of that. And then 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, Fred Price said it every, every Sunday. We walk by what? And not by what? See, sight people will never walk by faith because they can't trust it. And everything come out of their mouth is sight. It's not faith. Oh, this is wrong. That's wrong. That's sight. But faith makes you confess to something that's not sight. Might be in your feeling, but it's not your sight. Yeah, I am hurting, but I'm not hurting. I will be healed. I will be delivered. You may not be delivered now, but I'm going to be delivered. I'll be delivered. God. That's why I started telling my problems about my God. That's faith, not sight. Because I can keep looking at the problem. God, you see what they doing? Yeah, he know. God, you see them? <laughs> That's a little better position. Are y'all there? After Jesus had given the disciples a walk through scripture, he revealed himself to them and their faith was founded. How do I know? Luke 24, 33 through 35. Don't have time to, to, to read that that way. And I, I, I'm just going to just tell it. They persuaded Jesus to stay in Emmaus with them. They went to Emmaus. I'm still trying to figure out what was your purpose for going to Emmaus. What nothing in Emmaus for you. Nothing. I'm going, it's going to come clear after a while. And, 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 and he said, and, and Jesus was going to journey somewhere else, and they persuaded Jesus, stay here with us. That's a good thing to do. Jesus, don't go anywhere else today. Hang out with me. Stay with me. And so they, so they went to dinner. They went to dinner. And without words of telling him who they were, he never told them, I'm Jesus. He showed it to them in the word so their eyes would open up. But he never told, even when they got to dinner in Emmaus. They went to Emmaus to have dinner. They went to Emmaus to get revelation. And you got to go to Emmaus to get revelation of who Jesus is. Without words telling them who he was, he took bread and blessed it and gave it to them. Then the Bible says that's when their eyes opened. Why did it open? Because of his demonstration of who he was. See, they had been with him in other celebrations and they had seen he only broke bread the same way every time. We, we just see him in the upper room uh, uh, at, at, at Monday, Thursday, where he's having, celebrating the, you know, the Passover. The, but, but Jesus ate with people a lot. And it's like he wore his, he did his signature thing every time. What am I doing? What did he do? And that's when their eyes opened. When they saw him demonstrate. They said, nobody does this They saw him, but better than that, they knew him. 
they need. They said, then they, then they got religious. Then they said, did not our hearts burn within? While he talked with us. Along the road. What he did, he drug y'all back into a different reality. He helped you get back. Because you were sad just outside of Jerusalem. But by the time you got to Emmaus, did not our hearts. He had worked them over with this. With who he was in this before he showed them this. Are you there? And sometimes we're looking at this, but we don't see it. But he has to show us who he is in this. Are y'all there? The Bible says, now, now they were headed to Emmaus for some reason. I don't think it was just the idea. They were hanging there to hide out till, 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 till things got better. But the Bible says that, that when they didn't know it was Jesus, even when they didn't believe it, he was risen from the dead. Their hearts still burned because of the word ministry of Jesus. The Bible says that they got up from the table that next hour. No, no, that very hour. And returned to Jerusalem. Because <laughs> Jerusalem is where I put you. And you run into Emmaus, and I haven't called you to Emmaus. Because Emmaus is the way of sadness and defeat and not overcoming. But Jerusalem is where you had the victory. Jerusalem is where the resurrection happened. Not in Emmaus. Are y'all there? You can't found the church. Unless your faith is established. They said. With the help of Jesus. The Lord is risen indeed. Indeed means it's true. He's risen. And it wasn't because they saw his body then. It's because of what he said about himself. In here. When your eyes have been opened, you will want others to see what you see and to have blessings to you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a better praise than that. God is calling you from places of sadness to places of victory. Emmaus is about sadness, but Jerusalem is about victory. <laughs> Get up from there. Stop running. Go back. <laughs> Did you see it? Do you see it? Everybody get up and turn toward that wall right there. Just, just get up and turn toward that wall. And look at that wall and say, I don't belong in Emmaus. Now turn around. I belong in Jerusalem. Because that's where my victory is. Give God a good praise in this house. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm calling you back to your place of victory. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. He's done it.
I want to see you. How do we want to see him? Come on, lift up your voice. Oh, wow. As we sing. Come on, lift him up. Shining in the light. Pour out your power and love. And why are we going to just say it? Holy. Come on, somebody call him holy. I want to see you. I want to see you. Do them holies again. Come on all over the room. Lift up hands and call them holy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, one more time. Y'all got to get this holy. High and holy. Woo, holy. <laughs> so you get it in your gut. Holy. I can't rest till I see you. Just one more time. I'm crying holy. Just worship. Come on, just worship. Woo. I need some people to worship him now. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, open your mouth and lift up a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up a praise to him. It's right here in this room. Woo! Bless you today. Bless you today. The Lord bless you today. <laughs> the Lord bless you today. The Lord bless you today.
Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together. Give God a good praise. <laughs> Thank you for joining Jesus on the road today. We're headed to Pentecost. We're headed to Pentecost. But he's got to get you set in assurance. If you're here today and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord, it's available to you today. He loves you. You can be saved. You can be filled. You can be restored. If you're in this room and you want to respond to one of those calls, just slip up a hand and say, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be restored. Or I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to seek after being filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not filled. Get filled. It's not to a denomination or non-denomination. It's not to charismatic or Pentecostal or any. It's to the church. And as we head toward Pentecost, something happened on Pentecost on the Feast of Pentecost that made it Pentecostal for real, the Holy Spirit came in and it dwelt inside of people. Before then, it was an upon experience. Then Jesus showed up. He had it without measure. But Jesus said, he told the disciples, wait until you be imbued and endued with power, filled with power. Wait. Go and wait. When they got there, they stayed there all night, worshiping and celebrating. They became one in worship. And at daybreak, the Holy Spirit came in. I don't know what time it was. But at daybreak, Jesus, if that's you and you want to respond to any one of those calls, I just want to come back to the Lord. If that's you, just slip up a hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Whoever you are. How many are already saved in this room? You're already saved. Amen. It's sweet in here right now. The gospel sweetens the air. Turn to somebody sitting next to you and just pray something good over them in this atmosphere. Pray something good over them. Come on. Besides telling them you love them, pray something good into them. Hey, Sherry, put your hand on your mama and just thank her for wisdom. Just put your hand on her. Come on, there it is, right there. Thank her for what she's transferred into you over the years. A heritage of, of righteousness and Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Friends, keep loving each other. Telling each other good stuff. Sometimes you have to tell them you ain't much, but you all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. cry, I won't cry. Hallelujah. It's too late. <laughs> Let's pray for those that need prayer. Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift up Lynn to you in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. God, we believe you that even before surgery, you are able. She can get there and they don't need to do a thing. God, we trust you today. Healing is the children's bread. And we have victory because of what happened on Calvary. In Jesus' name. Bring her in and bring her out. In Jesus' name. We pray for Mimi right now, God, that you would bless her, regulate her heart and her systems. In Jesus' name. Keep her and hold her. Bring her to a different faith place. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We pray for Marguerite Waller. In Jesus' name. Go by yonder or the yonder. You can set the captive free. Touch your back. Touch this illness, God. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. It's a name that your name is above. Woo. Far above every name that is named in the earth is your name. Anybody else sick that needs prayer right now? You are sick. Come on down front right quick. Let's pray. He's already there. You just got to submit to his name. And I know your name matters. You just got to submit to him. For real. And say, walk me through, God. And he can do 